what happens after we die? Mm, I mean, uh, all of us face this, uh, ask this question sometimes in our life because uh, we always will, will come to have lose people, lose our loved ones, our friends, our mate. Okay, so the question always asked is that what happens to them? What, especially uh, when, when during the bereavement period, what do you say to people? Or what happened at death and beyond? So first is, where is heaven? We always talk about heaven. Okay, you know, they go to heaven and all that. But do you know that there are actually three heaven? heaven? Okay, the, the, the Bible says the first heaven is the atmosphere and the sky. So that's the first heaven. Then if you go beyond the atmosphere and the sky, it goes into the space and stars. That's the second heaven. Okay. But there is the third heaven where God is. Now, I, I, I don't believe that is in this. Uh, we can see that. I believe that it's there. It's one of the realms, or I, mean, I won't call it dimension, but one of the realms that is the invisible realm. Because we know that even now, when we exist here, there's also an invisible realm uh, around us. Okay, there are angels and uh, demons walking around us at this time, but we don't see it. And I believe that that is where the third heaven is, is where God is. Because we know that in Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he says that, he, he, I, I, I know a man in Christ, meaning Paul is too humble to say that I am the man, but who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or all the body, I do not know. But God knows. But I know that this man, whether in body or apart from body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise. And he heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. So, the third heaven uh, is what we also call paradise. Now, there's a lot of interest in heaven uh, recently. And uh, is there any way we can try to understand heaven, study heaven in a scientific manner? Okay. The nearest uh, examples I can find about you know, how we study heaven or what happened to us after death is the near-death experiences studies. Okay, N-E-D-E-S, N-E-D-E-S, near-death experiences. Okay, and you find that there's a, a growing amount of literature on N-D-E, near-death experience, where people uh, say that they are almost dying or they have died and they come back from death. So awareness of being dead. Okay, that means they, they describe that they are aware that they are dead. Okay, some of them even describe that they can they are floating above and looking down at their own body. Okay. Uh, and yeah, is a, a lot of them say that it's associated with positive emotion, it's our body experience. And quite common is that it's moving a tunnel. Okay towards communication with light. So, uh, I mean, we are quite used to it. It seems to be moving a tunnel, and then at the end of the tunnel, it's a bright light, and then you find that you see Jesus, or you see bright light, and then you see people your, that, that have gone before, people have died, the people you love are there. And some uh, have reported that their life goes, life, whole life goes before their eyes. Okay. So these are near death. Okay. So can we understand it? Okay. As Christians, we cannot 
deny that this near-death experiences occur. Okay, and as scientists, we cannot deny that too. So what happens when we die or when we are dead? Is there, we are moving towards the light or is there a, a bright light? To, okay. Now, studies have shown that there is actually a close correlation between near-death examples, uh, uh, studies, and G4 studies. Okay, G4 is uh, those uh, astronauts and uh, pilots and all that. They have to go through this G4, and they also experiences experiences that is similar to. NDE, near death, tunnel vision, bright lights, floating sensation. Okay. And basically, uh, what they find was that as uh, we die or as we uh, go get through severe G force, the oxygen level in our brain actually goes down. And as we go down, it affects the visual contact, cortex. So we do. They, we can experience uh, all these bright lights and all that. So scientists have uh, explained the way that, oh, there's no heaven, you die, you die. Okay. But I believe that there is some indication there is life after death. There is something that happens after death. It's not just death. Okay. So we go back to the Bible. The Bible says that humanity is made of three parts. The body, the soul, and the spirit. So at death, the spirit and the soul leave the physical body. The physical body remains in the grave. Okay, but the soul and the spirit leave. So, so the near-death experience may be just the soul, your soul and your spirit leaving the physical body. So where did they go? Now we start with the Old Testament first. Okay. Old Testament teaching is that when we die, the spirit leaves the body to go to a place called Hades. Okay. Or uh, Sheol. Sheol is the Old Testament place. Hades and Sheol are both the same place. Okay. And they believe that both believers and non-believers go to Hades or Sheol. So, before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that means before Christ died and is uh, resurrected, everybody goes to Sheol or Hades. And this Sheol or Hades actually is divided, have two compartments. One is a place of torment or prison, while the other is called Abraham's bosom. Of paradise. So just remember in the Old Testament, okay, we die, we go to Hades or Sheol. And Sheol has two uh, uh, portion. One is the prison or torment. The other one is Abraham's bosom or paradise. Okay. So you, you can tell which is a good place to go and which is not. Then Jesus came. He died and he resurrected. And he went to paradise, remember? He thought he was talking to the the, uh, the, the, uh, the thief on the cross and says, today you will be with me in paradise. So when Jesus died, he went to paradise. Okay, So he was there in paradise. Jesus actually went to Hades or Sheol, but he went to the paradise portion of it. But he mentioned that when he was in Hades or Sheol, he also went to proclaim to the spirits in prison, which is the other portion, that he has overcome death. Now, we, there are four possible interpretations of spirit in prison. What, who are these, or what are these spirits in, in prison? Well, this spirit appears to be the souls of the faithful of Old Testament. And Christ went to proclaim his redemption to them. I mean, uh, Jesus came 
So all those who believe in him after his death and resurrection can go to Christ. But how about those Old Testament prophets and all that? They do not know Jesus. So it's possible that during this time when he went to paradise and then he moved over to prison, he actually set uh, a, a program his redemption to the Old Testament saints and people. Okay? Some people, some scholars think that these are the souls of those who died in the last flood. Okay? Others think they are fallen angels or offspring of fallen angels. The Nephilims. Let me clarify this in this diagram. So you see that in the Old Testament time, there is a paradise, there is a great gulf or the abyss, and there is two other sections, Torment, the, the region of Torment called uh, Sheol or Hades, and then there is another uh, world or seg uh, segment of, uh, of uh, the area called Tartarus or the underworld. That is only mentioned once or twice in the what, but this is where, and uh, Tartarus is where the fallen angels are imprisoned. So we, we know that the foreign angels are not in prison with the people who died or the souls or the spirit of those who died. But they are in a separate section of the underworld. So you see that paradise, torment, and what? Okay. So Abraham blossoms, the righteous will come here. Okay. The unrighteous will, will come to the torment, which is a temporary intermediate state where the wickeds are kept in con continuous conscious punishment. Okay. One thing to note is that uh, what Jesus is uh, in his parable is that both uh, the rich man and Lazarus and Abraham who are supposed to be dead were conscious. That means after we die, we could be conscious. It doesn't mean that we go to so sleep or something. That means we are actually conscious after we die. But what happened is that after Jesus came, because when, uh, when Jesus came and died on the cross, he and the good and the other, the other thief who comes to paradise, the other one went to torment. When Jesus died, he and some, uh, those who believe him from prison or torment went straight up to the third heaven where they are with God now. Okay, So that means, in other words, if we are to see where our loved one is now, okay, they will be in with the third heaven. They will be with God. They will be with Jesus. Okay? Uh, because the whole paradise and a certain portion of Thomas had actually moved up to the third heaven. Okay? That means the paradise is up there. Paradise here is empty already. There's no paradise here. Okay? So that means those who are died are actually with God. Okay? So those who are in Thomas Okay, and in Tartarus will persist until the time of Gehima or hell. Because that's when the great white throne judgments. That means we'll be here with God until and every all of us until the great white throne judgment. And when this is this is the final judgment, when this ju is judged. Judgment is done. The fallen angels and the, uh, the demons and those who do not believe will be sent to hell, which is the lake of fire. Okay, And the new heaven and new earth will come into being. 
Okay, so this is, uh, in a way, a very brief summary of what happens to us after we die, both in the Old Testament time and the New Testament. Okay, so about hell. If you look at the diagram just now, well, hell is actually in the last part, in the lake of fire. Okay, so, you, but we find that we actually have a lot of uh, uh, a knowledge about hell, okay, which actually is not true. Okay, most of uh, the things that we have learned from hell is actually influenced by uh, medieval influences, especially Dante, when he write about the Divine Comedy. In his book, The Divine Comedy, he talks about going through hell, which is called Inferno, Purgatory, which is called, and then Paradise. So all these are the artificial invention or the artificial uh, storytelling of uh, uh, Dante, which has actually influenced our whole understanding of what hell is. Okay, so you know, we always have this uh, understanding of, of a picture of hell, which is a, a fire all over the place, and people, the souls are burning, and then Lucifer, okay? Uh, the fallen angel is actually the ruler of hell, which is not true, because Lucifer was never the ruler of hell. Okay, if you look at the uh, current, I mean, nowadays, even on Netflix, there are many uh, uh, stories about Lucifer and all that. But the truth is that the Bible never says Lucifer is in charge of hell. Okay. The Luf Lucifer's kingdom, surprisingly, is on earth. And the king is the enemy of the kingdom of God. So we have to take away a lot of our, our imagination or our understanding of what hell is, what hell is really about, okay? And not, and, and throw away all those uh, fearful things that we've learned from our movies, our stories about what hell actually is. But then it is a place of punishment. Okay, the Bible says, uh, Gehinma is the hell or lake of fire. Is where the beasts and the antichrist and the false prophets will be cast into a lake burning with brimstone. Where those who are not safe. Okay, and where Satan will be cast in. And the unsafe, okay, who are judged. So it is a lake of fire. Now, the name of hell actually comes from a deep ravine or valley south of Jerusalem, okay, where some terrible thing happened. That Hebrews, Jewish parents, sacrificed their children to Molech. So there was actually uh, the, the Israelites who were supposed to believe in one God actually practiced human sacrifice and they won't sacrifice their own children. So it's a terrible valley. It has a bad connotation to it. And later on, it served as a city dump. And because of the rubbish and all that, it keep on burning. So it is, it is a, that's why the fire, lake of fire comes from. Okay, it's because of the rubbish, it keep on burning. So it's the lake of fire, it's a place of everlasting, it's a place of punishment. Okay, it's also called the furnace of fire, everlasting punishment, the miscroom of darkness, second death. So that is where hell is. So we see uh, in this uh, drawing that uh, the devil in hell and then uh, Lazarus in uh, uh, with uh, Abraham. So what, what does that uh, uh, tell us about life after death? 